Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habatifillah I wanted to offer this advice to especially young sisters that are new to the Islam as reverts who don't have uh, family support and struggle with issues such as marriage, with issues such as hijab, with issues such as maintaining a halal lifestyle. What you'll find from many of our ulama when they're asked about questions like this is they will advise those sisters to get married. And while this is a excellent uh, advice and coming from our ulama, I want to offer something additional because we've seen the consequences in our society, especially in the West, when sisters just jump up to get married to the first suitor or the first situation or something that appears to be nice or they just rush and are so urgent that they don't look at some other things and take care of themselves. And so what I want to say is yes, that is a great, beautiful thing to marry and Islam encourages us and that is one of the ways that sisters can protect and preserve themselves if they have a righteous suitor uh, and an established suitor as well meaning that they uh, have the means the economic the maturity and other things which help to make a fruitful and beneficial marriage and as Islam in various forms shows us that we should be the best and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us an opportunity in this dunya to be righteous leaders of the in this world so to speak as Allah, as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that inna Allah mustakhlafukum fi the Prophet ﷺ said in a hadith in Sahih Muslim that Allah establishes you on the earth and looks to see what you will do. So the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us options and choices, of course we can infer that we should make use of those options and opportunities. So what I want to advise not just uh, sisters, but young brothers especially as well, is to benefit from the fruits in this dunya. That take the opportunity to aspire to be the best that you can. First and foremost, the best Muslim that you can. Practicing the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Secondly, aspiring in the dunya to achieve something because what we find is often people who do not aspire, who do not have any goals, who do not take the opportunities afforded them and make everything so difficult for their own lives, even they're not successful in the Islamic way. What do I mean? I mean that, for example, a sister, for example, a young sister, she wants to marry because she wants to be taking care of her dean and she wants a righteous man. What do you have to contribute to that man? What do you have to contribute to that marriage? That's what you have to look. And likewise, brothers as well. What do you have to offer a sister in, as far as stability? As far as your mental stability? Because the one who strives to attain goals, whether it be education goals, whether it be goals to be an excellent, excellent in IT, whether it be a goal to be uh, a doctor, a lawyer, or a shoemaker, it doesn't matter, but it's to have a dream and to realize it. They have a different perspective on life and tend to have more success. And that is from the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that those, for example, the one who wants to do talib al-ilm, that they go and they strive and they leave their countries of residence and they go strive to sit with the ulama. They have, from that process, that striving, they have experience. A lot of times, if Allah gives them the, the benefit, they gain wisdom and they gain the knowledge that they were seeking. Unlike the one who is not afforded that opportunity or doesn't take that opportunity and they sit and they do not uh, gain benefit. 
then there's a difference. Likewise, if someone wants to achieve something in the dunya, the one who achieves some things in the dunya, this can help them in the hereafter. The one who's a doctor, a Muslim doctor, he went to school, he strived, he got his credentials and did whatever he needed to do or whatever she needed to do. She has many more opportunities even in life to continue on seeking Islamic knowledge or buy things in a halal fashion or give sadaqa jariya because she strove to attain a goal and she achieved it and she financially has the means. And this is why Islam does not reject wealth. But I, my point, my ultimate point here is I wanna encourage our youth to aspire, to aspire to do something, to aspire to contribute. When a woman just wants to be cared for, which is khair, this is khair azim, but she has to ask herself the kind of man that she wants to marry and, and gain, what, what is she contributing to that marriage? She's just cooking and cleaning. Maybe she doesn't even know how to cook and clean. Maybe she doesn't know how to do anything, even to please a man. So how, what is she contributing? And so that's the point I want to make. Habatifillah is aspire. Aspire to be the best you can. Fi dunya wal akhirah. And this is why we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina dhabana. Bless us with good in this life, as well as the hereafter. Because... The good in this life, as the Salaf used to say, this dunya, a dunya dar, dar al amal, wal akhira dar al jaza, and the hereafter is the is the time for reaping the rewards of what you did in this life. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ilm al nafi, rizq al tayyib, amal al mutaqabbil. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fil akhirati hasana. وقينا ذاب النار وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم